Hi, I'm Tamara Calder Richardson, and I'm your host of Seeking Heaven, the Near-Death Experience and Other Phenomena. Thank you for joining us. And if you haven't subscribed, please do, and also hit the, the bell for the alert so you will get new show new show alerts, special events, or anything else that I'm having. And I ha also have every, every week on Thursday at 4 p.m. a premiere, and I do have special events. So do sign up and subscribe, like, and make comments. And also check out my membership perks. I have some excellent membership perks to help support this channel, as well as uh, if you're a love leader for $24.99, you also get me once a month for 90 minutes and I do readings, uh, evidential medium readings and also spiritual guidance. So my gosh, that's so worth it right there. Well, look, let me uh, tell you who our guest is tonight and I'm really excited and we've been having way too much fun and uh, <laughs> to, just to, b beforehand, just talking because I just hit it off with this person so well, they're so interesting. So I wanna tell you a little bit about our guest. Um, she is my kind of gal because she has experienced so many things. And what I'm finding uh, a trend that's, um, that uh, people are seeing is a lot of near-death experiencers, and this person, our guest, is a near-death experiencer, is also an experiencer of spiritually transformative experiences, out of body, astral travel, the paranormal, ghosts, spirits. And she has, and sometimes alien encounters, she has, I think, just about had all of them like me, and uh, she. Uh, I think we're both uh, glad to know that that we're that well, at least we think we're normal. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest, and that would be Laura Catchledge. She is a near death experiencer as well as a paranormal researcher, author of several books, and the podcast host of Near Death TV. So you'll have to check out her channel on YouTube. Now she's had she had a near death experience, and we're not going to go too much into it. But she was um, she was killed in a riding accident, and she spent all, uh, most of her life around horses. And she will talk about that. Oh my gosh, she's got such an interesting life. But she, uh, she she did have a farm at one point that was haunted, and it had so much activity that she had paranormal teams come out and she was filmed and she's going to talk about that they did paranormal investigations on her farm because there were so many and we'll talk about um, more in depth what those were and how that sort of unfolded but she was on uh because of this haunted farm she was on cbs abc fox nbc she's also done 150 radio shows as well as several articles with paranormal magazines she was also on another paranormal show, uh, The Haunted Horse Farm, and uh, she was, it was uh, My Ghost Story. She was on that. Great. That's, I really enjoy that. My husband and I watched that, and she was on that as well, and My Ghost Story called on camera. I like that too, and she was uh, invited back, which no one ever usually gets invited back uh, for, uh, for more of her story and so forth, but she was, ex uh, she was episode 69 if you want to check that out. Uh, and she'll talk more about that with us. She's also has several books and they are a fictional murder mystery kind of NDE romance <laughs> where she weaves in all these different uh, phenomena in her books and it and also is enjoyable. And it's called the near death saga in which each of her books has included the true um, uh, paranormal event that's kind of woven in there. So I am just thrilled to have her today and I'm going to bring her on right now, Laura. I did not even do you justice because you have such a rich background. So we will have to, uh, we'll have to go more in depth and, and, and let this unfold mm -hmm. all the things that you've done. So thanks for being here on the Seeking Heaven channel. Well, Tamara, I'm really glad to be here and thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. You sound great. <laughs> you've done this once or twice. <laughs> uh, yeah, a few times. That's, uh, that's what I was saying. I love it because we can just have fun with this since mm -hmm. you have been, uh, uh, interviewed so many times and and with broadcast what was the other paranormal show i know i left that out was paranormal was it nightmares what was paranormal it paranormal night shift on the travel night shift. i was just on that about a oh gosh a year ago okay paranormal night shift on the travel channel okay and uh that is not episode 69 we'll just have i'll just have to look i'll look that up this weekend okay, okay. I, what episode do you remember what it was um I'm, I really don't know. <laughs> okay. I apologize as well. I was the first guest, um, I think, in the 
it could be the fourth or the eighth show i'm really not sure uh, okay okay we'll check it out yeah absolutely and i enjoy watching those shows anyway they're interesting and i want to find out about the farm but first i want to find out a little bit about your near-death experience and i'm wondering we're getting a little feedback could you maybe turn down a hair of your volume and i'll do the same i don't know why we're getting feedback but just to kind of handle that a little bit that might help how is yeah. this is this better yeah you still sound great but i think it'll help with the feedback so if you could tell us start with i know there's so much to <laughs> cover with you uh, and we only have an hour, um, man, you've, you've got a lot going on there. So if you could start with your near death experience and then we'll just migrate into other supernatural mystical stories. Well, certainly, um, let me take you back to 1979. I was just an average teenager, uh, working as a part-time model, full-time bartender. One day I decided to go to Centerville, Virginia ride a horse that I was just not equipped to ride uh, that was above my abilities. And the horse took off. I went in one direction, they went in the other. Uh, I fell face first into rocks and was killed. Luckily, the people behind me that found me, the two gentlemen were able to resuscitate me. Now this is back in 1979, before the internet, before any discussion of near death experience. So right. when I started to tell the doctor at the hospital about what had transpired, he asked me if I was taking drugs. Oh, I'm sorry you had to experience that. I'm so sorry. I'm laughing because a lot of people that are uh, well known also, like um, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Yvonne Quezon, who's written a book on Touch from the Light and, and, and several others on this phenomena and other phenomena. She's done uh, 40 years she's had of research with this. And when she came in as a medical MD, they said the same thing to her. She's also had NDEs. So uh, doctors have gotten the same thing when they presented it. But now, luckily, we're on the other side of that. So uh, you're totally supported here mm -hmm. on the Seeking Heaven channel. And my watch, my, the people that watch, I call True Seekers, they are very loving and supportive. So you are you are welcome to share whatever you want to here. This accident, this 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 accident was the greatest gift of my life. Now I could have, yeah. I would have liked to skip the broken nose and hand and the, you know, I was a giant bruise from head to toe and I got very banged up, but I came out of it with a new perspective because you can believe in things, you can believe in an afterlife, you can intellectualize it, you can, you know, uh, accept a hypothesis of what the afterlife is, but going there and seeing it takes you from being a believer to an experiencer. And that's what my accident did for me. Okay, so you were riding this horse, and and what and I, like you said, you crashed into the rocks. Um, did um, how it was just an accident, I guess. You just got thrown. Is that what happened? I never, I never hit the rocks. I left my body as I was leaning off the horse, and I knew I, I knew it was bad. I mean, I've ridden uh, most of my life, and I knew this was going to be bad. And I uh, left my body, and suddenly I was thrown, catapulted into a a dark tunnel. It was like velvet soft without a texture, if that, if that makes any sense. And I went into this very, very dark pit and through the tunnel and had this tremendous experience because I got to see my grandfather again. Now he died when I was 12. He died of cancer. And I absolutely loved, loved, loved my grandfather. And to see him again was more emotion than I can convey. Wow. Wow. That's, that is a, a bonus. So now tell a lot of people say, tell us about the tunnel and how did that feel? I went through a tunnel too. It didn't seem scary. Uh, even though it was really, really dark and it felt like the, uh, a, what do you call it? A perception of the tunnel. Don't really know what it was, but, um, explain for people how it felt to you because that people are going dark mm -hmm. a tunnel how did that feel for you first of all this was not a I did not I never had a, a religious epiphany at all what I had was uh, when I went into this tunnel and I, I was shocked you know here I was a 19 year old kid you know living life just starting to have a great time had my own apartment my own job thought I was in the a cool crowd uh, and then the shock of my death was almost, in, it was more than I could almost comprehend. And I think that's when my grandfather came to get me. But I had a life review. It wasn't pleasant. It wasn't hellish. 
it was just a, a gut-wrenching experience, you know. Really? See, okay. Yeah, it was gut-wrenching. It wasn't comforting. And after it was over, uh, it's so personal that I, I, I will not talk about it. But it was uh, after it was over and I was saying to my grandfather, you know, it's been so long. I felt like I was there a very long, long time. Okay, longer than Earth time. Oh, the no comparison. Okay. Uh, and my grandfather was, you know, telling me that I had to go back. And this is where I really lost it. I, I didn't handle it well. I was absolutely fighting it, and I didn't want to leave him. And then I was, um, as I was coming back to physical reality, things were getting more dense, not as much thought or reactive. And I was seeing him, and I was in this, the last layer before you come back into physical reality. And it was, like, very, very mauve. And he was there, and then all of a sudden, and the shock of going back, it's like you're getting, taking, do you know how when you uncork a, a wine bottle? <laughs> like going back yeah. in that way. And right. I was looking at the, the, the men who, you know, basically saved my life, not feeling appreciative. And my first thought, this is not reality. And I was looking at this gorgeous field in Centerville, Virginia, and I was getting loaded up into a, a car, and I felt very disconnected to physical reality, and especially to the people who were kind enough to save me and drive me to Fairfax Hospital. I went unconscious again, but I didn't, um, I, I just fell unconscious after that, uh, and then woke up and then went into the, you know, the hospital, and it took me about 12 hours to calm down. So I thought I thought it was really interesting, Laura, about you seeing your granddad. That's that's a totally a bonus. I can only imagine that heart feeling. But that when you said when you came back, you're like, this is not really reality here on planet Earth. That there's so much more, and I will have to duplicate that to say and go ditto. That when I was on the other side too, I felt like that was the real place, and this is the fake place and we feel so much like it's the real place and I do right now feel like it's the real place but in that state it feels more real but more importantly is that you're um, the consciousness you've had so many uh, what is it supernatural paranormal uh, consciousness shifting uh, events that have happened in your life and you have so many uh, you want to just talk about the next one whatever first comes to mind because this was just one of them uh, as far as your path of awakening, but you have many. Well, this, the accident was a gift and I'm so grateful for it because it was the beginning of me seeking knowledge to have a greater understanding and becoming aware. Um, uh, something in me shifted. I was not the same person that returned that left. In which ways do you feel? Well, after having a near death experience, I know it's a, uh, it's true, um, there is another dimension that we go into. I wasn't really prepared for it. Uh, you know, it was, it was an accident that happened, but it was a, it was a lucky gift. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's funny, it, it does change your perspective. So, mm -hmm. and you're so young, I, I just don't know how you dealt with that, so. I didn't do, uh, I didn't do well with it. There was nobody to talk to. Oh, uh, I talked to two doctors and was deeply shamed. I finally confided in my sister, who thoroughly believed me. And when I was talking to my mother about it, my late mother, I described what my grandfather was wearing his plaid flannel shirt. And she remembered that shirt and that outfit that he had worn in the 1960s. So there was wow. some real confirmation there. So luckily, you know, later on, um, my grandmother, my grandfather's wife, confided in me when I was 24, I wish she told me sooner, about her mother having the gift and how really? the psychic, uh, psychic sensitivity uh, ran through the George family. I just wish she told me okay. sooner. Okay. So on top of that, this probably heightened your intuitiveness. <laughs> Usually does with people. Is, is that true with you? Did it heighten it? I'm not a medium. I don't channel. I, you know, nobody's sending me secret messages. I'm pretty much a normal Democrat. Um, but I had experiences that I have really had a struggle with. 
you know, after the near-death experience, like seeing a deceased loved one right after death, you know, I don't didn't really need the phone call from my mother, but I would call her and said, you know, is such, a, you know, somebody in the family died, who is it? Some things like that. So they were random, uh, very, very out of my control. And I had a real time, hard time understanding it until a friend suggested reading Robert Monroe's book, which really put it in perspective about out of body experience, um, near death experience, and sort of gave me a roadmap. I didn't bother reading anybody else's uh, 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 books. I just realized, okay, this is another dimension. I've, I've dipped my toe in the well, and this is just uh, part of the continuation of existence. Absolutely. You're, you're, you're right. So, uh, again, 19, I was a, a kid when most of mine happened, so talking about dealing with that, like three, four, five years old, I mean, it was, I just kept it a secret. It was difficult. So, and you're right, only till recently, of past few years, is it more a common talk and people are very interested in this topic so that, you know, it's a little bit later, but people are very interested. So let's talk about the farm. I want to hear about this farm. What was it? Was it, the, was it a farm you grew up on or did you purchase the property and what kind well, of activity did it have? Let me preface this. After uh, the accident in 1979, I've had uh, paranormal activity and every home I've lived in. But I finally right. ended up living outside of Lexington, Kentucky. I got my little dream farm with my horse that was like, he was like my child. Uh, so I had horses and dogs. I was living on a farm and very strange things started to happen on this farm. Like the telephone ringing, that an unplugged telephone that was ringing, um, uh, orbs coming in. I had a paranormal, five different paranormal investigation teams come to my home, all found uh, evidence, uh, EVPs, videos, all kinds of interesting documentation, which I thought was interesting. I almost wanted to get, you know, more of a grasp what was happening in this home. So on a lark, I decided to submit some of the video evidence to um, the biograph, um, is it, yeah, the bio channel, My Ghost Story. Three weeks later, I'm out with my videos in Hollywood, you know, being a guest on their show. So that was kind um, of exciting. It took a lot of courage for me to talk about it. I didn't talk about my near-death experience for 30 years. Instead, I parlayed in all these stories and put them in a fictional book series because I had to express it. I had to get it out. Yeah. I understand that. Right. And, uh, and it was a safe way of putting it out there initially mm -hmm. with the book. So, I, uh, you know, so that was uh, bravo on your part for... For being creative uh, to be able to express it in that way. So um, now this paranormal, now you're looking back, how long did this act? Oh, you said it's been, been every home, but with the farm, how long did it last on the farm? Was it always like that? Yeah, pretty much like since the first week I moved in. And um, I did talk to the new owners and they haven't had experienced any activity. They have not? No. Well, and did the <laughs> did the horses experience paranormal activity? I mean, did the horses? You say animals are very aware well, of this kind of stuff. They lived there until they they perished. They died, okay. and uh, that was pretty heartbreaking. Uh, and I knew after that my last horse died that I I didn't want to be on a farm anymore, uh, and decided to leave farm life. But I had been involved with horses all my life. I mean, gosh, I get clobbered and killed, but I still went back for more. Yeah. Well. It's not, it's not, you know, the accidents happen, and yeah. uh, I love animals, too, so you can't stop the love of animals, and I think you've got one behind you right there. Animals follow you everywhere, so uh, so getting back, but I think it's true that animals, dogs, cats, horses, they do sense if there's something, a shift, it could be a portal, a shift, or something, or paranormal, or supernatural. Um, even when loved ones enter the room, the animals kind of perk up. And it doesn't have to be bad. It just can be someone that you love that kind of pops in and they'll look all of a sudden. And animals are the first to catch on, I think. So I don't know if your horses did that, you know, was there. But they're they're very aware of things like that, too. They, get, they would spook for no reason. And one horse kept getting locked in a stall. It drove me crazy. I had to go out there and free him all the time. And it was a big, heavy stall door. And it was just very weird. Um, oh, wow. I really wasn't terribly frightened, but I lived alone, so I, I that's why I was seeking, 
you know, answers. And we've okay. got videotapes of orbs coming right by me. I'd walk into a room, there would be orbs. I'd leave that room with the video cameras on me and it would follow me from room to room. We got a very interesting EVP. Would you like to hear what it said? I would love to. I would love to. I want to, yeah. Jeff Sanford is a very famous uh, paranormal researcher. So he put the, uh, you know, the tape recorder in the house and he said, uh, are there any children here? And uh, he went and played it back later and you can hear an audible male voice say, you have to look. So that was a, a class A EVP that was very wow. interesting. It's on my website. And wow. you know, there's been other videos and um, just, it was nice to have the verification basically. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, uh, are you going to play that for us now, or can uh, you? I can't. I'm not that tech savvy. You'd have to go to my okay. website. Okay. Oh, you got to go to the website, which is lauracatch.com. L-U-R-A-K-E-T-C-H.com. It's links to everything. So, there perfect. you go. Okay. So perfect. So, um, after all this, you're trying to find answers. Do you? Do you? Did you ever? Did you ever have a gut feeling who you thought it was? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was my uncle's. Now I had a late uncle that I adored, and that my mother listened to him, to the to the, uh, the tape over and over again, and said, "That's my brother's voice." Oh gosh, because well, it was funny as you're talking. What I was getting, you're saying paranormal in, in every area. Many times, it with when you open that portal, could be through meditation, Kundalini awakening, NDE. Doesn't even have to be like this. You know, it could be sort of traumatic or even, not, but whatever opens it up generally we become like a little portal <laughs> and then we have like little i mean not to compare our spirit family to like happy puppies <laughs> but they look like happy puppies like when you go and you're trying to pick out a puppy and they're like me pick me and they're so excited to be around us that they kind of follow us around it i mean they can multitask be on the other side and here and so they're they're i didn't sense anything bad but the fact that they wanted you to notice so much is i think it's kind of sweet I mean, that they wanted you to notice it was them. Love extends to the other side and back. It does not diminish, which is very comforting. But uh, Tamara, I have to tell you, I haven't had demons, hauntings, bad crap happen to me. You know, knock wood. Uh, nothing like that's ever happened to me. I just think that I've had uh, spirits uh, that were loved ones or acquaintances just want to, you know, make their presence known to me. So there hasn't been a a terrible uh then or you know nobody's trying to get me and um, no one's possessed me i'm a very dull person i guess <laughs> uh, on the track, that sort of stuff but i think to me it's comforting it's to me yes. i mean what is the question everybody wants where are we going after we leave phys physical reality yes i know where i'm going you know i don't have yeah. any doubt i've been there right. Yeah, you're right. They want to know, is it, is it, where is it? Uh, and I think it's, uh, well, you always hear over and over, it's a place of love and you feel complete. So, mm -hmm. and we get to be with those that we, that are, have, have gone on and crossed on and what they crossed over, mm -hmm. which is great news, right? It's it great is. news. Uh, we get to see, and, and it's like a big family reunion. You know, they get excited. Uh, sometimes if, if someone's on hospice or, you know, the family knows they're, you know, it's like kind of, I hate to say it, a death watch. And, and maybe they're like just older and they're, they're, they're in hospice and it's, you know, toward the end. What I will get people say, well, should we call in the people? Because some people that fly in and all this and, and they know it. And I usually am not, you know, would never tell someone, oh, they're going to pass. But in this situation when people are waiting, um, what I will get some, sometimes from spirit is so sweet. They'll go, oh, we're starting to decorate for their party. And they'll show me them decorating for like on the other side of party, like it's a celebration that someone's crossing and how happy they are because they're reunited with loved ones. So I think that's a beautiful little cute analogy. And sometimes they'll say, oh no, we're not decorating for the party yet. It's gonna be a while. <laughs> and it's so cute that we have a party. So um, so go ahead and tell us about some of your other experiences because you have you have a lot, including I would love to hear about your experience if you'd be willing to share it with the Monroe Institute because people have had a lot of really positive mm -hmm. experiences there. And I, I know quite a few people, actually two that have been on my show that have uh, taken classes there. Well, you know, I'm glad you asked me that. I found 
I am, I'm going to say this as nice as I can. I'm kind of picky what I read. I want to uh, learn, listen to other people that are credible. And, you know, when you get into a field of, you know, the paranormal, you know, you get some very credible, good, honest people that want to share their experiences. Then on the other side, you get the fringe, lunatic, and wackadoos. Um, You're when right. And, and right. that is what you want to filter out of your experience. You All the negative Nancys, nobody needs that. <laughs> you, need, you need good, credible people. Now, in 1985, I started reading uh, Robert Monroe's book. Um, he's written three before he passed away, and he was the founder of the Monroe Institute. These, this is a very, very credible, um, yes. yeah. credible organization. Um, and the wonderful thing about them isn't just the books, is that, you know, if you do the Hemisync deep meditation CDs, it can felicitate paranormal or um, out-of-body experiences and things like that. So I don't want to tell too much of my personal stuff because I really parlay sure. that into my books. But sure. this is a very, very credible um, organization to deal with, and I respect their work. Right. Well, you know... And then also you mentioned we were talking about at pre-show earlier about uh, William Bullman, which I met, I think, seven oh years gosh. ago at the Afterlife yes. Conference and got some books signed by him. But he took over. I don't know. I don't know if he's still in charge, but he took over after Robert Monroe. Is he still in charge or is it someone else? Someone else now in it? He's part of the organization. He's doing less classes, but his books. What, you know what the great thing about William Bullman? He sort of um, he can explain in understandable English without trying to superimpose, you know, any religious dogma or spirituality. You know, it's sort of just the facts and a very credible explanation. I really concur with his views, how the afterlife works. Um, it's so hard for me to articulate it in a show. That's why I write my books, because I can right. take you step by step the layers that are less dense and more uh, thought reactive when you're out of body. Uh, the great thing about it is, you know, if you're listening to this show, you've got an open mind and you're trying to learn. And Tamara is the one to teach you. Oh, gosh, that's sweet. I do my best. You know, I, I, I try to I really care about people and humanity. And that, that touches me. Thank you. Um, I try really hard to um, bring interesting people like you. And uh, thank you for saying that. There are some people in the field that are not credible now. I don't mean that in an ugly way. I just mean some people might not be very stable. But the way I look at it is this topic, this mysticism, if you want to label it that, you're going to get some of those. It's just kind of part of the thing. You just have yeah. to be kind to them, but you just kind of let them go on their way. So I try my best to get people that are grounded in these topics and they have a, um, a logical thought process about the whole thing, no matter what the topic is, if it's, you know, spirits or UFOs, but it's basically the whole thing is where do we go when we cross over? What does it all mean? Why we're here? And to give meaning to our life. And there are people asking these questions now. So thank you for, you know, stepping, stepping out again and sharing a part of yourself because there are so many people reaching right now. They really are. And they're reaching at different points. You know, there, there are some people that are just starting out in this journey of asking questions there are people have been doing it for a long time but it's a process that we're all we're all spiritually growing together it's it's a consciousness thing and i know it sounds like a hippie love unity thing and it probably is <laughs> but it's true we Can are I connected something uh, uh, a feeling i brought back with me yes um i had after my near-death experience i had an urgency um compulsion to get my life right to get my life right that's what i really felt is to learn as much as i can before i make my transition to treat people fairly i'm not a pollyanna i've got like a pretty bad temper and a potty mouth when i'm when i'm irritated <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> I, I really do have a short temper sometimes but i haven't seen it you've been very it, patient I realized that when, uh, while I was in the non-physical world, every action that you do is big. It really is big. It really is important to, you don't have to like, you know, let, I don't expect anybody to hold hands and sing Kumbaya. Okay. 
But if you're fair with people, if you're clear, if you do your best not to damage their lives, you have scored big points. It's very important to not take advantage of people or animals and to just be, you know, try to be a decent person. Try to be fair. Try to be nice to the dry cleaners when he messes up your shirts. You know, don't take your bad mood out because our actions are big. And big is an understatement. Your actions really, really matter. And it was uh, not an easy thing to see my mistakes. Even though they were dumb mistakes, they really, you know, you can really hurt people. So being a better person and getting your life right was the urgent call that I had. And I didn't always do it very well. But I've made the attempt. Well, we're all, none of us are perfect. We're a work in progress. I say that all, that all the time, and that's not really expected. But I, I will say you are not the first person that has had a life review that really uh, cringes and does not want to talk about it because it was um, uh, hurtful on different levels. I, I love, so I'll refer to Danny and Brinkley. <laughs> so we'll talk about him. Oh, uh, I say, love him. Great. <laughs> uh, say, say by the light, we'll see, you know, I, back then when his book came out, uh, gosh, what was it, 30 years ago? I don't know, a long time yeah. ago. Uh, it was groundbreaking, uh, as well as some others, but his, and, you know, Betty Eady, who's been on the show, hers too, but he uh, had the, you know, the book come out, Say by the Light, and it changed my life when he talked about being the light and the mm -hmm. life of you feeling not only what you felt, but all the people that were affected how they felt. And so everything, there's nothing, there, there's nothing that's, hidden so if you go i wonder if they'll ever know how much they that they hurt you yeah they're going to find out at some point like you don't even need to worry the same thing if you hurt someone whether it's intentional or not we're going to find out so you know i i'm like you laura i try to do the best that i can i try to i mean you can't help that scottish temper you know i i i, I get frustrated you know but i always uh before i act out i, I try to cool off or put it in perspective um, and do the right thing. Um, that doesn't mean I always do. I try to really hard because I know that everything we do is a ripple effect. And, and that's just living awake and living uh, conscious. And also, I think there's spiritual maturity in that. Right? I, I'd also like to explain that, you know, <clears throat> when you die, it's not a straight shot to heaven or hell. There are um, a multitude of consensus realities in uh, the next uh, phase of our transition. And if you were, let's say, a Buddhist, you're going to probably get attracted and end up to a B Buddhist community. There is so much more choice than you can comprehend. I think that was one of the biggest things for me, was that how much more choice this, there is. Before you get to your I there or um, your higher self, there's a lot of stopping points. Um, and I'm not a great explainer of this because there just aren't words to to put in to the splendor of the next the splendor of the next world. But you know what? I've gotten a lot of email from people saying, "Well, you know, um, uh, uh, there's mental illness in the family. There's this. There, blah 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 blah." Not to worry, because when you do die, there are great places of healing and other beings that will help you heal the problems you had in this world and this life. There's a Absolutely. lot of forgiveness, too. There's a lot of what now? Forgiveness? Forgiveness. Well, there, I agree. It's not this, it's not this world. It is... Um, the, 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 yeah, there are lower realms. I'm not going to talk about that. I really don't have a lot of experience with that. I know there are people that have, but most people go to some elevated higher realm than here. And so mm -hmm. there's always love. There's, there's, I, I kind of look at it this way. It's like they're, they get therapy. <laughs> there's therapy on the other side, whether it's healing, because whoever is, is, let's say someone is in mental anguish on this physical plane. Mm -hmm either they cross over and they're like, I'm good now, that's happened, or they cross over and they're like, you know, I'm doing better, I'm getting help over here. I've gotten mm -hmm. both. So, and even I get all the time people say, oh, suicides, are they going to help? That has not been my experience as a medium. Mm -hmm. um, they, they do have to work through things because obviously they were upset when that happened. 
And so they're still having to work through whatever their issues were, uh, but they get the love and the help that they need. That's why I feel it's so important if, I mean, again, free will for people to cross over. Um, but you can't make someone because some, you yeah. know, some people might want to experience being a ghost. Uh, you know, I thought it was interesting. Um, um, premiere I have with Wendy Rose Williams. She's a past life regression person. She admitted being a ghost like 200 years. <laughs> she goes, she ran it a lot. And I was like, why? And she said, well, you know, I was really troubled. And I was upset. I wanted to kind of stay that way for a while. So some people might want to experience what that's like to not ascend and cross over. It's free will. And so, um, you know, you can't make someone, but I think it's in everybody's best interest because you get more help in the higher realms. Don't you agree? Yeah, Tamara, I, I do. And Tamara, don't you think, you know, you're still you when you cross over? Totally, 100%. You're, you're still, still thinking crazy stuff like, oh, well, you know, uh, do I get to eat food here? And you just, whatever you think. <laughs> or, uh, uh, you know, well, I see my dogs, where are my dogs? I mean, you're still thinking these silly little human I think when you cross, you're still conscious. You're still it's thinking. Calm down. I think. I think it takes a great while to calm down. What I what was so wonderful for me was to see my grandfather. That was oh. he wasn't in pain. He wasn't like he was from the cancer. You know, to see him, him. vibrant and loving. I mean, oh, it was such a relief to know that that terrible awful was was done. And oh, yeah. I, I, I did something when my mother had stage four cancer, my father had Parkinson. I sold my, my farm because my horse had died, went in and took care of them for five years and did all the caregiving. It was a gift because I got to be with my parents and help them transition and they weren't in a nursing home. And I'm not a saint, you know, it was overwhelming. But when I, when after each of them died, because they died at home in my arms, there was so much. God bless you. There was so much peace in their transition. And this is something that you love to hear. My father would never talk about a near-death experience. He knew what I'd been, you know, he'd read my books. He'd seen me on TV. It was just too upsetting for him. But just before he uh, had a stroke, he came into the kitchen and out of a nap. And he said, was there a party at the house? You know, I said, and he started rattling off this names. And he said, you know, Bill was here. And I was like, which one? And he said, Bill Purdy was here. And my, that's my cousin. And he had passed away, you know, like 35 years ago. And he was naming all these people that had died that were at his party. And he sat down and then he got up and he had a, an ischemic stroke in my arms and I caught him. And we got him, you know, you know, he, he did recover from that, but he died a couple of weeks later. Uh, and he had, they, people had come to see him. People yes. had come to see him in the house and they were preparing him. So I was really glad because I knew these people that loved him were going to help him transition. Oh, I'm, I, that's such good news. And so when people always say, and you, this is such, I just love you're bringing this up. It's so important because we need to be there for people. Hopefully we'll have someone there for us. But mm -hmm. Uh, no, it's not just really a time of, of sickness. We don't live forever, guys. <laughs> However it happens, there's a lot of ways to go. I just always tell, you know, God, you know, Jesus, please just don't make it painful. I'm not really into pain. But a lot, most of what I get uh, from near-death experiencers as well as spirit mm -hmm. is that, boom, you, like you're the rock, you pop out beforehand uh, and so forth. And so the pain many times is, uh, is eliminated. But the, there are so many loved ones that gather with mm -hmm. difficult times, but especially during uh, we're getting ready to pass and they gather and they know and they're there and they're supportive. And I love when someone, when I've, you probably, I mean, people probably have experienced something like this where you have someone who's really old and they're very ill and they're in the hospital and they start talking about, oh, I saw so-and-so kind of like yeah. that. I said, oh, there's yeah. so-and-so. They came over here and talked to me. And the, many times in our Western culture, they're thought, oh, they're crazy. They're on drugs. No, they're not. They're actually, the people are there talking to them, having a conversation because they're preparing them. Uh, and my, my mom, when you know we were, we were taking her to the ambulance, she looked at me and she said, "Call my mother. Tell her I'm coming." Like that. <laughs> and it, you know, my grandmother been has been dead a very long time, but um, 
but it, you know everything becomes so you know surreal when you're losing somebody but there are great moments of comfort like if you experience i think you know take time to be with that person make their transition easier or you know so they're not alone and scared absolutely and you know the thing is we can't control certain things when people are passing it's their time it's god's will we don't all we can do is be loving that's all we're required to do is show love yeah. and so we have to think well how is that well i don't know love may be putting on someone's bedroom slippers and feeding them i don't know but whatever that kindness and generosity is and you're right being a caregiver is difficult we've had my husband and I, quite a few people have passed and we've had to be there but uh, I was uh, I was told by my sister-in-law who's around me a lot she died young she was beautiful 46 she was the only woman 46 still working at Hooters if that tells you how good she looked oh. and, yeah but she nobody looks good when they have four different cancers so she, she, no. she yeah she struggled through that uh, but she um, she was she her passing she was so dignified and made so many jokes and at one point I was around her and she goes, don't be afraid to be around me. And I, and I said, well, I don't know how to be around you. And she goes, will you just be honest with me and be you? I said, mm -hmm. I, can, I can do that. And, and she goes, so what do you think about this? I said, I think this sucks. Is what I think. <laughs> and then we had a laugh and she goes, I do too. And she asked me something once and it was just like, so like, you know, like, wow, better not get this answer wrong. And she asked me this and she was, she was dying and she was uh, not like that moment, but she was in the process of, and she, she knew it. It was a very odd times because she was young too. And she said, why me? And I said, well, and I had to sit there and think about it. I was like, God help me with this answer. Yeah. And I said, none of us get out alive. None of us. I said, but you're just, yeah. the fir you're just the first in the line. Others are further back. That's all. Mm -hmm. And, and I said, but, you know things do go on and she went okay like she could have that <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. like okay so i think that it helped make me a better person to learn to i don't know the best way you can embrace this process even though it sucked but to just yeah. um being present um it's not easy as you know being a caregiver just being present and being in the moment yeah. and try to have love and try to take the fear out of it and try to put the relationship back in. But uh, the bonus for all of us is that we get to all hang out and it's like a party. I mean, they, they, I mean, they really, uh, I love uh, when people come through and she's dancing. Why is she dancing now? She goes, because she couldn't walk. And I was like, oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> I <laughs> love hearing gotta, that. We've all got a cheerleading squad on the other side waiting for us when it's our time. But. You know, there's been some people that have uh, asked me over the years, you know, uh, JG, aren't you anxious to get there? It's very important. I, I mean, it, it is to me and my own take on it is my own take, but you got to finish this life and do the best you can while you're here. Enjoy it, you know, enjoy the the, the ironies, the, the humor. Uh, go, go have buffalo wings somewhere. Listen to a comedy club. Take some joy with you. Um, it'll be the ride's going to be over quicker than you think, but there's is right. something very very uh, joyful that you know that this isn't the end. That there's just a transition that we're all going through, you know. And also, I wanted to ask you, um, I can't be the only one, but when I realized that reincarnation is probably a fact, I was a little horrified. I don't want to be 13 right. races and have to go through puberty or and all that oh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Again. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait a minute. We got to learn language again. We got to go to school yeah. again. I know when I first saw that, I thought it could be possible. Then I started running past life this few years ago. I've run like 300 hours. I'm like, this sucks. You mean I got to be a baby again? I got to learn to speak. I got to learn the right. I just feel like that I'm now getting a little bit of mastery, not perfect, not perfect of this world. I, I, I mean, I still don't understand a lot of things, but I feel like, you know, it's taken me this long and I got to do it again. This sucks. I know. That's what I felt like, you know, but I wrote a book about uh, reincarnation and tried to uh, show how my characters, you know, in my saga, and I tried to explain it as best I could. I've, I've tried to take, because sometimes, you know, on a show, I'm not the best explainer. I, I'd like to take my characters 
and you know go step by step how they would think and really immerse the reader into how this works what does a, a near-death experience really feel like step by step so i did my best to do that and to explain reincarnation mm -hmm. and put in some humor and a murder mystery and some you know romance because life is filled with pimples and potholes it's just you know <laughs> try to enjoy the ride yeah absolutely and that's what i it pimples and potholes i love that that would be a great hey i see a book coming I, that could be that could be really a cute book. now one of the books that i want i've got to finish the love from heaven okay and then mm -hmm. i've got a couple more that i'm writing but one that i'm just like i've just got to write this because it's just going to be purely funny spiritual and that is and <laughs> there ain't no grease in heaven why that book i get all the time people come through and talk about food and people go well, okay here's their chance to be here why are they talking about food they mm -hmm. really miss food they never mention sex <laughs> but they mentioned chocolate cake fried oh, yeah. chicken <laughs> you know <laughs> like this stuff because they're they're a high vibration uh, now yeah. they can pretend to eat but they don't have that that's a, that's a human earth thing and they'll talk about the picnics where they got to get especially when it involves family and food they love talking about that uh but yeah they they do now i have had romantic um like people have been married like 50 years that come through but it's it's still that romance but it's that deep because you could it's that same relationship mm -hmm. uh but but deeper and sweeter at a more spiritual level and that's beautiful to see especially um people that are very up in age and they miss their mm -hmm. spouse and then when they connect they're just so happy because that's who they want to be with that's exactly yes, who they yes. want to be with yes i i i believe that uh to you know to know that you'll see that loved one that death isn't the the isn't forever is is just it's a beautiful feeling so you know when i've had hard times i've really drawn on that i have autoimmune disease and i've spent my adult life in and out of hospitals and surgeries and all that's that boring right. stuff and then you get the medical bills and that's insult injury oh, but, wow. um, it's helped me ground me and kept me moving forward you know because i have this deep understanding you know i i look at like i've seen yeah. this much of the other side just this much and it's enough to know that i've had a glimpse you know to give me the confidence to keep pushing and going and trying to you know finish this life out right before i make the big transition I, and i think you made a good point earlier that you were had this compulsion this whatever uh, you want to call it i call mine like a mission it is a compulsion. I will say compulsion. I was obsessed with this topic as a little girl because it happened to me then and I would go secretly in the library and read up on, you know, past lives, so and so. And then finally when it, like I said, I you know, life after life with Dr. Raymond Moody and then say by the light by Danny Brakeley. That was like that was it. That's what I was looking for. And I've never gotten off that path. I've always been. This is not like a novelty to me. This is my freaking life. And I feel I it's 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 um I think you might understand it, but I feel a mission to do mm -hmm. what I came here to for and to help and to be my better and higher self. Now, with that says, with that said, I'm not perfect. You know, I'm not. I get frustrated. Mm -hmm. I'm a regular person. Uh, you know, I don't. You know, I I um, do the best I can, like everybody else. But I do feel the need to do that, and I think it's because mm -hmm. once you see, I guess it's a slice of divinity then you're just so grateful to be oh my gosh to, yes to you're so grateful to oh, serve yeah. it's big i say divinity god creator whatever you know whatever you know same thing source whatever you want to call it that i just feel so humbled that i feel like that i just want when i come back to feel like i did good that immense love is like being wrapped in it's good it's so good <laughs> I mean, it's just, it is the, the, the most blissful, wonderful feeling being wrapped yes. in love, even if you're a few yes. seconds in your higher self. Yes. Um, I, you know, the funny thing is um, I'm dyslexic. I mean, I flunked every English class in high school. Uh, <laughs> and you're a writer and you're and, an author. <laughs> and I, I just kept dreaming of this story in, you know, near death uh, uh, connection. And I went out with a few people because I lived in New York. I worked on a TV show. 
and I got encouragement. It took me many years to write it, but it just flowed out. And, you know, I had other authors read my book before I embarrassed myself in publishing, uh, you know, to make sure it wasn't, you know, horrible or something. And it, it just happened. I mean, these books just poured out of me because I had so much inside that I wanted to express. And I don't like want to tackle people and say, hey, you know what happens when you die? Um, <laughs> I didn't talk about it for 30 years. So I needed, that was my outlet, the books. That was, so I, so you know, it explains stuff. So it's three, but it's done as a story, but you're woven mm -hmm. in your story into it and yes. all the things that you know to be true and have learned, right? Correct. Correct. Hard, hard earned lessons of life. And, you know, my first experience, you know, like when I saw my poor Aunt Evelyn after she died, I got up and screamed like a mental patient running around the house because there was an orb in my bedroom and that had disturbed me. Um, you know, I didn't walk into this, you know, open minded and, you know, like Mary Poppins. I mean, I had a hard time the first few times yeah. I had encounters with a, uh, a spirit or and then after a while, it was like I was an old pro. I was in the hospital one time <laughs> uh, and it was very sad because the woman across the hall was dying and I was in bad shape. I was having what they call the kitchen sink. Uh, the doctor was giving me plasma transfusions continuously for five days because I was going downhill with autoimmune hepatitis. I looked up right after that woman died across the hall. I saw these orbs come in and hover towards me. And I was very calm about it because I didn't know if I was going to walk out of the hospital or not. And I felt so lousy. It didn't really matter. But I just felt like I was, it washed over me something, uh, love or healing or whatever. And the next day I felt better. Now, I don't know if that was wow. a healing, you know, it was a good outcome. Yeah. Oh, it's good. It's good stuff. You, I mean, you know, you wonder, yeah. is that your guides? Is that angels? Well, you know, it's something positive that's there to help. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and I do think we get that help on the other side, not only from our family, but from the celestial realm, you know, whatever yes. angels, uh, light beings, whatever you want to uh, call that. And I think there is a tremendous amount of support. As I've been told, there are endless supply angels. I'm like, well, that's good news. So don't ever feel like there's a limit <laughs> if you need some. Hey, I need some backup. You know, you, you definitely have that. But you're right. You know, it's funny. I guess the whole word paranormal, I don't like it because I think paranormal is normal to me. I think it's magical. I, you know, paranormal does, like you said earlier, does not have to be spooky or all that. That's what a lot of the TV shows um, do for ratings. But yeah. most of what you know, yeah. but most of what's out there is really, it's fascinating. Like the things that have happened to you is fascinating. I mean, it's uh, maybe hard to wrap your brain around and understand at first, but I wouldn't call it spooky. I would call it kind of magical and fascinating um, to see these things. Can I share uh, um, something that saved my life with you? Oh, are you kidding? Yes, of course. I'd love to hear that. I know my viewers would too, so go ahead. In 1994, with autoimmune disease, I was in bad shape. I had uh, autoimmune hepatitis, pancreatitis, and I was very, very cold. You know, sometimes before you die, you get very cold in your body temperature and whatnot. Um, I was in bed and I woke up in the morning and my grandfather just walked through the door, walk, walked right up to me and put his hand over me. And he wasn't, he was white luminous, but you could tell his features. Mm -hmm. And he, he looked like him, um, but he looked a little bit younger than when he died. And he put his hand over my stomach and said, spleen spleen your spleen i didn't even know her, what your spleen was what it did or where in the body it was <laughs> but i told my mother about it and described it and i just i was so sick it almost didn't matter i mean i was glad to see him so like two days later in my left ear someone whispered spleen spleen and then i had a flash through my whole body of urgency if i didn't have my spleen out i was going to die so i went to my doctor in Orlando and I just you know I figured I figured I just told him the truth and he looked at me and he said I've seen things that I would never be able to explain throughout my career he said I'm going to write you an order for a splenectomy and and and, and just get it filled so I went to the surgeon uh, I said can you take my spleen out this spring and he said how about Wednesday and <laughs> I got it out when they went in I had hemorrhaged 
instead of my spleen exploding and it imploded and there was a large clot the size of a man's hand of a, a blood clot and i was oh. chugging aspirin for pain so i should have bled out if i hadn't had this intervention i never would have known to even ask for a splenectomy or oh. complain or, or say the right thing it saved my life now when i woke up i didn't feel too grateful because it was a pretty hellish operation but um my reach through the veil and he saved my life oh what a beautiful heavenly story what a beautiful mm -hmm. heavenly story um this is why i always say we all have a fan club in heaven because they are cheering us on they actively care just because you can't see them i mean some people can see them i used to physically see them solids but i said please don't mm -hmm. god don't let me see i got to cook and do things i can't be seeing spirit people now and then every now and then i'll see something i'm like okay um the other day i was in the kitchen and i saw uh for just a few, few seconds a complete solid <laughs> of the dog i used to have 10 oh. years ago i know and i went what and i thought you know i'm looking and i saw him and he, and he was just sitting there wagging his tail but i have a dog that's oh, i love him tucker he's a rescue and i've had him four years but i feel like he's i'm more in love with him that I am with, you know how certain animals mm -hmm. just connect to your heart. And mm -hmm. he just looks at me. He's so innocent and pure. He's got this innocence about him. He really doesn't want anything. He does like food though, but he doesn't <laughs> really want anything other than, you know, some treats. Uh, and he's, he, but he's got this horrible uh, heart condition. He's kind of like on his, you know, mm -hmm. he's taken off five times a day. Now I think that's why Larry, my other dog, my little gray poodle showed up because it was near his bed. Mm -hmm. And I and I think that's why. But I saw him for sure, and then it went away. But I used to see that all the time. But it is, it was not. It was odd, but it was comforting too. Yeah. And this was just like two weeks ago. It's comforting, but I can't. I don't want to be like I was as a little girl, where I would see them all the time because I've got to live in this world right now, right. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't be like in the like Target and like seeing you know spirit people all around i know they're there I, I can hear them everything if i and i can turn it off but i don't it's not it's, it's not healthy uh you have to be a regular person and i love your message yeah. that you said earlier is so 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 important that what we are here yeah we're here for a reason to influence and to be kind to people and learn and teach and just be just be a part of it but what you said be a real person you know, laugh, go to a funny movie, go order some buffalo wings, you know, uh, whatever have it is you do. Have a good time and, and, and appreciate the joy that we're given. Um, you know, uh, I, I think if you had asked me when I was 18, I would have been the least likely person to accept a near-death experience. But uh, I don't have, I, I can, I'm not a medium, I, you know, I, the few encounters that I do have are random and odd and you know I've got no control over this stuff uh, I just think it's an unusual gift that you know comes to my doorstep every once in a while when I want it to happen it doesn't and when it does happen the message comes in sideways so I've just you know not worried about it um, I did near-death TV because when I had my near-death experience there was nobody to talk to so I get authors and experiencers yeah. that I find credible and try to just inform. So that's my little way, my small way of giving back. It's a big way. And I thank you for that. And, I, and God bless you for doing it because it's not easy. It's very time consuming and you want to get credible people. And that sounds horrible, but some people, I, it's, it's strange. I'm, I'm finding, I don't know if you've seen it. This is just coming from me, but I, I'm saying that some of these near-death experiencers, some of them are wonderful, lovely people. Most of them I meet are incredible. And there's some that I meet are um, uh, almost like they're a celebrity. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, um, you know, you know, like a celebrity would act. And I'm going, no, this is, you know, <laughs> and then I have, then I've seen people that actually stalk the end of years, like, you know, it's like they have wisdom, but we all have, we're all connected to God, you know, with, <laughs> with us, our birthright. I mean, you know, you want some wisdom. It's all right here in each of us. So uh, we'll learn from one, one another. I don't think you should boost any one person up. I think we can 
share and learn together. But I think that there is something to be said that people come back that have a positive story like you. And, yeah. and it's usually a simple message. It's love, love yourself, partake in the world, try to do the right thing. It's all those things like your freaking grandparents told you, right? Be yes. a good person, do unto others as they do unto you, enjoy one another, um, uh, love each other, all these things. Yeah. Um, and, the, and But maybe the bonus is, is that uh, you get to see everyone you ever loved. And more importantly, you get to see all your animals you ever had. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm going to like jump in the mosh pit of all my animals. <laughs> if somebody is looking for a wise person to lead them, it's not me. <laughs> well, Keep looking because I'm, I'm not that candidate. But if you want to, uh, you know, go to my website, you know, I've had some interesting experiences that I've written about. I'm glad to share. Some things are too personal that I don't share. But, you know, whoever has had a near-death experience, you know, you're not alone. There's just regular people like me who's had them absolutely and we're all spiritual beings you can pretend all day long you're not and you could pretend you're that person on the business card or whatever it is but you're a mm -hmm. lot more than that and there are people from all backgrounds atheists all backgrounds people superficial that have these things these near-death experiences and honestly if you live long enough you're probably gonna have I don't know if you want to call it that but some kind of experience because you usually don't go here, boom, you're gone. You usually have, whether you, you like you said, the, the hospital or you get messages or you see your granddad or, you know, this is to me a normal state. And you, if you yeah. ask most people, they have maybe not so many as yours, <laughs> but they will have one or two to you share. Years and years though, damn right. Yeah, uh, well, I know. And a lot of people are secretive, but they're more like you than you think. They, they I'm telling you, because they'll tell me stuff and just the, regular person they have things in the dream and they go oh but then they really passed I, mm -hmm. they came to see them before they died or they'll have the experience with pets coming to see them or something similar to the oh they visited me in the hospital so i think it's uh that we're still bound by that love you know the love doesn't die i explain it like this we've all got a pinch of psychic you've had a near-death experience you might have just a little more than a pinch, but nobody's got a full cup. You know, um, there's nobody out there that can just turn it in. There's no magic in this. There's just uh, experience and uh, knowledge that we are immortal uh, spiritual beings. Yeah, that's it. So to me, when people say, oh, aren't you afraid being a medium talking to spirit? I'm like, no, I'm a spirit. I mean, you're, it's your grandmother. Why are you afraid of your grandmother or granddaddy or your, you know, your sister or your, what? I mean, it's your family. I mean, you right? have tremendous gifts, Tamara. Let's face it. You do have that more than the pinch. Uh, a lot more than I do. But, you know, you're, uh, you're very humble. And that's what people, why people are attracted to you because you, you're humble and you're not a know it all. You're, you're, you're a sharer. You know, you're, and that's a very generous trait that you have. And, and I appreciate it when I listen to your shows. Oh, God bless you. Thank you so much. Well, I just, I really try to be of service. And, um, you know, everybody, if we all do our part, and I have had these really extreme gifts for a long time. And I would, uh, well, was very frightened to come out uh, because I didn't want to be put in the loony bin. <laughs> Uh, but it's funny, I've uh, come out, you know, later in life and it's funny because I've had people from college that have contacted me and they go, they see what I do now professionally and they go, and I said, yeah, I came out and they go, you were like that back then. And I said, I was, I was hiding it. She goes, no, everybody knew. And I was like, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I, I think that that is, is, you know, I was in the closet, you know, uh, for 30 years. That's a long yeah. time. So once I wrote the books, I was talking to, you know, um, some agents and things, and they said, well, you know, you're on the wrong side of 50. You don't have any body of work. So I realized I had to be my own guerrilla marketer, and I thought, you know, I'm 50. Who cares if I sound a little ridiculous? If you don't like what I say or you find it far-fetched, it's not my problem. If I'm honest and I'm clear, so I just sort of like, started doing shows and it was healing for me and I got a lot of response and people would, you know, email me and th their stories. And there was like such a good community 
on the internet. There's a good group yeah. of people that are just honest. They wanna they wanna mm -hmm. learn. They wanna hear about your experience. Share theirs, and I think it's a, a very healthy thing. I, I agree. I agree, and I think that the people that you find uh, that are online, like the YouTube, and that are searching, mm -hmm. they are they've got they're they're a little bit above the average person that just turns on the tube. They're yeah. they're they're looking for something and they're a little bit more open and um they're a little bit yeah because of that they're just um they just have a little bit more edge. So mm -hmm. I would agree, I would agree they're more open to hear things and less judgment. I can't believe someone actually said that to you. I cannot believe that's just what that you're 50 and you don't you don't have blah blah. You know no, what? It's actually pretty funny. I mean, that's ridiculous. I can remember when I was uh, in my early 20s and I looked so young. I was carded till I was 38 and <laughs> I had cut my hair into a pixie. So I would look mature. I got glasses, you know, I look very mature and I would go buy. I remember service merchandise when they used to be around and I bought some gold things because I would look like I'm a you know, older because I did not get any respect. I look like a kid. My whole family's like that. I look like a little kid. And um, I think it's liberating to be like a grown ass woman now. I love it. I mean, I love it. And, and, and so, you know, I remember years ago now, and I'll just, well, we'll this is just, just to kind of ditto and back up what you were saying years ago. And I went to advertising. I went to school for your college and then I have owned an ad agency 25 plus years. And and, and won awards, full campaigns, and all this. Okay, before I did that, I was in college at East Carolina University, commercial art program, marketing. Okay, for this, I had someone in an ad agency I went to see, and at the time they were well known. And I went to see them, and they told me that, and I had won awards in art my whole life, that I was not talented and that I should hang it up right now and that I have no future in this business. And I, and you know, it's funny, I had totally forgot about that. What person would validate, or first of all, a young kid that would say that to someone, I've seen people that really aren't talented and I would go, well, it's coming along, you know, cause if they want to do that, work hard, you know, they'll make it happen. It may work. They may, it may take them longer if they're not as talented as others, but I would never say no or, or put or, or squash someone's dream. Dancing. Yeah, and the thing is, you if you have life in you, I don't care if you're 99 years old or if you're if you're five years old. I don't really don't care if you have life on in you and you're here. You need to do what you need to do, and you don't need to listen to anybody because only I always say you are the expert of you. You have a PhD in you. You know exactly what you need. You don't need to be asking what people what you need. You know what you need, uh, right? I Laughing after that guy, the very, very big agent sent it to me. Uh, you know, you're on the wrong side of 50, lady, and blah, 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 blah. I thought, huh. Well, I didn't have, I was kind of broke at the time. So I wrote a very clever ad on eBay about my haunted house. And um, what, uh, gosh, to sell my haunted house, what, 70,000 people went and, and viewed it. And I got on a bunch of radio shows and, you know, kicked things off. And I thought, you know, who's laughing now? <laughs> uh well, exactly. I mean, yeah, no one should evaluate for you. I mean, you look at people now like uh, that are like these shows or reality shows or these where the tr I love these true life kind of stories they are very I would prefer to watch those. A yeah, lot of really those yeah. Yeah. And you get all kinds of people on there. But I mean, you look mm -hmm. at even the reality shows like Dog the Bounty Hunter. I mean, he's rough. He ain't 20. But people yeah. are like one of the number one shows. So, you know, I, I don't listen to people. People are just whatever. You have um, to live life to be able to be an author and write about it. Yeah, I didn't know anything at 20. And and, and I, I know a lot more at 60. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, well, you can live life a little bit. But, you know, the, right. thing, the funny thing is about somebody that's negative, they're trying to crush your dream. It's their problem, not yours. Yeah, absolutely. What is the saying? Uh, it's not, it's not. It's not up to, to me to worry about what someone thinks about me or whatever that is. I mean, I, that's the, that's one thing about getting older. I don't care <laughs> I don't, I really, at all. Like I yeah. don't care. Like if someone said so-and-so, I'd be like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I really don't care what someone has to say. 
um, in terms of it doesn't have any effect. But you know, when you're really young, it has a terrible effect. Oh, it's demoralizing when you're young. You know, everything's mm -hmm. kind of worse. I'm sorry, I've got a, a cat helper here. <laughs> so I guess that's time, I guess, for us to I'm wrap it up. When the cat says, oh, beautiful cat. She's my rag doll. I got three. I'm a crazy oh. cat lady. This is my oh, starter kit. Oh, beautiful. Well, I've got Shizu crazy, and they look like teddy bears, and they're just the best mm -hmm. things in the world. I had no idea. I've had so many different kinds of dogs my whole life, but the teddy bear, I'm going to get fat animals from now on because they're so much better to sleep with. I've had skinny ones all along. Don't do that. Get a little squishy one like a like a teddy bear, like, like your cat. Oh, they're so much better. Well, look, tell people how to get in touch with you, and they can buy the books on Amazon, correct? Yes, uh, you can go to the near death saga.com and that's got, you know, previews of my books and links to, you know, Amazon, Kindle, things like that. Or you can go to lauracatch.com and that's got links to my uh, shows and the movie I made and, and uh, a lot of other goodies and, and articles. So knock yourself out. Thank you. Well, oh, well, there's so much there and then they can listen to the recording too. Oh, yes. Yeah. If you want to see the EVPs recording, and some of the news reports, the news stations, all everybody came out to debunk me. Everybody did. And I welcomed it because uh, five teams left with positive findings and wrote articles. And I became, you know, I had some good friends. And I took some of that footage when I made my movie because I made a, a comedy and I put it in there and, and filmed it at my house. So it, it got kind of recycled. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Well, you are very industrious, and you have a very creative way how you uh, that you express yourself, not only through your your style with your writing, and the way you've made it it fun and interesting, but put some true life things in there too, as well as you know your communicating and stepping out about your NDE, which is brave. People don't get it. It's brave. It's brave to oh, step out. You. Well, yeah, I figured if I have nothing to lose if I can make it through twenty five major surgeries. This is a breeze. <laughs> it is a breeze, and you're supported tremendously. Not not just here on earth, but in heaven. And they sing your praises when you when you tell your truth, or anybody tells their truth. There's power in that. So I always say, speak your truth. You know, and if you do it in love and a, a positive way, you just win. And and people people like that. People like the, it's so refreshing for someone just to be themselves. And you have been just that, which gives people courage to be themselves. So. Thank you so much for speaking out. And Thank you, you for have having been me. a joy. I, I'm so excited to see all the things that you're going to do. And you're welcome back here anytime. I, Thank I, you. I uh, see the beauty in you. And thank you so much. You're God bless come you. Nice show. Okay, I'll do it. I will have more fun. <laughs> God bless you. Thank, thank you. you so much, Laura. You're a joy to the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me on.